Hello friends and family, thanks for being here with us in another STEM 10 Plus series lesson. I am Archie, and as you might know, my background is in engineering, but today I am wearing my biologist hat, and I will do my best to explain to you about natural dyes. I will talk about where does one natural dye come from, I will show and explain the importance of pH when we get to the experiment part, and I will show some visuals to better serve your learning of indigenous people that are native to those lands where such natural dyes form. Let's start by asking you all, have you ever had any Skittles, strawberry yo plate yogurt, seen people wear lipstick, or own a red toned piece of clothing? Many of these selections have natural dyes in them already, but how is it possible, you may ask, will come learn with Archie? So get ready, and vamonos! Let's go. Well, you can see here a parasite bug on a petal of a cactus, a nopal, its host. When you see this white cocoon, you can see where the parasite has deprived its host from its nutrients. Here is the parasite bug known as the cochineal bug. This bug is the reason for natural dye, and this is the female version uh, you are seeing here. When this bug is dead and dry, it is then grinded to a nice fine powder, producing a very dark red known as carmine red but you know like very quickly adjusting the ph you can change the intensity of the color or dye as you see here which is pretty cool from a cochineal bug all right so i have taken a stick and crushed this bug to show you that indeed you get this red carmine color the reason for this amazing color or dye is because it's actually a carminic acid Yes, I said carminic acid that is used as a protective mechanism for the cochineal to use it as a repellent for predators, which is very interesting, very interesting bug. And let me say you, this bug is very ancient. It goes back to the 1500s. back once again friends you might be asking yourself where am i standing right now with the cactus nopal garden as well as the interstate behind me well i'm in the neighborhood i grew up in 30 plus years barrio logan de san diego at the famous and historic chicano park this garden has a variety of nopales which i hope you can all make it here sometime and take a glance to your right we have large petal cactus and to the left we have the much smaller in size some with small needles and some with large but come closer Yes, that's it. I want you all to get a feel for an infestation of a parasite bug and how this parasite attacks its host. Fortunately, here I found a cochineal and carminic acid or carmine dye markings. As you seen before in the beginning of the video, we can think that the cactus and the cochineal bug have a symbiotic relationship. You might ask yourself, what is symbiotic? Where it is mutual two different distinct organisms helping each other out. The Nepal gives nutrients to the cochineal and the cochineal bug protects the cactus because of its carminic acid that repels predators that could harm the cactus. I'm telling you, this bug is interesting because with the natural dye that it produces, many corporations regulated by the FDA have been approved to use this bug's carmine dye as a color additive to many things like cosmetics, clothing, food and beverages, and many more. So does this creep you out? I personally am glad that I know what's going on into my food. This color is labeled as E120. I want to go ahead and take a moment here and recap of what we have just talked right now. So we have talked about this ancient bug, this cochineal bug that is providing this natural dye, right? It's the title of this video, right? Natural dice. So where do we also see this, this bug besides Chicano Park? Like, have you seen it right now? Well, this bug is mostly common seen in Mexico, Central America, South America. Sometimes uh, you have like big um, farming plants uh, like in Peru. And let me tell you, this um, type of farming for the cochineal is very intensive. Okay, it's very intensive because you really have to pay attention to what was going on. Make sure that your cochineals are, are, are doing well, you know, because these are very small, small bugs. Very small, like probably like two millimeters in size or less than that. Okay, 
So we already seen a, a picture of a female bug, but not a male, right? So I'm gonna show you right now. But the female is the one that we're more attracted to because it gives away that rich, more rich, more bolder, vivid, red carmine color than the male. The male is more like, a little bit lighter. And also the female is easier to cultivate and you know, and, and catch. The male, in other hands, that male grows out wings and it flies around. That's the reason why uh, there's the population of cochineal because the male gets to fly to different kinds of petal of the nopal, the cactus, and just pregnant all the little cochineals. And also fun fact that it takes about third, three months to 90 days for a cochineal bug to become a full, fully mature uh, adult, which is pretty crazy, right? It's a, it's a really fast cycle. But maybe, maybe that's common when you have um, very small creatures, right? Uh, also, the female bug is more bigger than the, the, the male bug. Like, have you seen other organisms like, let's say, spiders, like the arachnids? You have seen that the female might be twice as bigger than the, than the male. And it's a common thing in some of the, like, insects lives or arachnid or stuff like, organisms like that. Okay? But we have also heard about the mutual symbiotic relationship between the cochineal and the cactus, right? So it is pretty, pretty, pretty cool how how life works and how organisms can interact. But in this case, it's like a parasite interacting with the host and creating a symbiotic relationship. So stay tuned, and we're gonna get pretty soon to the experiment because I want to talk more about the pH and how we really change those colors. Okay, so stay tuned. Okay, friends and family, it is experiment time. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the cochineal bug when it's dead and dry you see how it is kind of like black grayish white but there's like some lines in it too i'm transferring the cochineal into this plastic bowl i don't have a pestle or mortar so i'm gonna do the best to grind it into a fine powder once i start grinding it like you can start seeing already the rich carmine color in powder form but to intensify this color i'm gonna add warm water and make it into a solution because it's gonna be easier when i change the ph all right, so keep grinding it as much as I can. How beautiful the color. I believe you can see it. It's nice. Really rich and bold. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and transfer to like this paint tray. It has different sections where I'm going to have a control and I'm going to have one for acidic components and another one for basic or alkaline. I'm going to start by adding apple cider vinegar. You can go ahead and use white vinegar too. In chemistry, we like to call it um, acidic acid. I'm doing the same thing with baking soda. So here you can see that the reddish orange is the acidic and the other one it is the alkaline which is purple. All right, so here my nieces are painting a heart with the basic and then the other one, you can see the orangey but then it transfer it back into black for some reason, which is pretty wild, right? <clears throat> okay, so here I'm leaving you a video of Maria Luis Mendez de Cruz from Teotlán del Valle, Oaxaca, Mexico. She's gonna show you how in Oaxaca she does play around with the cochineal dye. So she's gonna go ahead and start adding baking soda and sea salt. And she's gonna mix it very truly on this piece of wool that she has already in this glass. And you get to see the change in color because you're playing with the pH, you're modifying the pH like how we showed you earlier. And here you have the acidic component here, aspect. Now that you see this like nice reddish color, orangey, she's gonna go ahead and transfer the solution into another glass. And what she's gonna do here is she's gonna put a nice clean piece of wool now, mix it a little bit, and she's gonna add some volcanic stone, some limestone rock powder, and alum. So she's gonna mix it nice, and you get to see here how beautiful, how nice, vivid the purple that she's gonna get violet when she makes it through. So it's just pretty incredible. So all the things that you really didn't know about different colors and dyes, how ancient civilizations and indigenous folks used to do this. So thank you. All right, folks, there you have it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, the nice sight views. Um, yeah, like I told you, I came here to Chicano Park to really go ahead and document something for UC San Diego create a science video to get uh, the children, the next generation excited. You know, we wanted to be, um, what's it called? We want to be the next generation for scientists and engineers, you know? Want them to be the pioneers, want them to explore and discover that, you know, like the uh, unsolved mysteries that this world has for all of us. But I also want to give a shout out to Kevin 
and also Gabriel that you probably have seen in some of my other videos. Uh, so I want to give a shout out to them for helping me out record this. So here they are. What up, guys? What's up? Yeah. All right. So this is it.